our contributions in education will be our legacy in this industry. Whether it's through live education or maybe through social media, we're always trying to make a personal connection with you, the learner. At FanVia, we believe our smile is our business card and our personality is our logo. And how we make people feel after you experience our education and tools is our trade. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us, my friends, and be a part of the Sandia community. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you happen to be. Uh, Francesca, here's your shout out, my dear. I wish you all the best of luck. Uh, Francesca, one of our uh, people that's on the chat is going, getting ready to go take her written exam in a few hours. So Francesca, we're sending you a huge virtual hug and sending you tons of luck. Good morning, Bernadette, Violetta. And hey, guys, if you would, as you come on, just type, you know, just let us know where you're from. Where are you coming in from? Sandra, good morning, Shauna. Uh, Jeanette, good to see you. Hey, Kurt, what's up, big brother? How you doing, buddy? I hope you are staying healthy. Uh, exciting day today. Uh, we have a special, very special guest who I absolutely love. I just love listening to this guy. You know, I could sit there in an evening and have a whiskey. That's right, a whiskey, a whiskey. And I could sit there and listen to this guy talk. But I love listening to uh, Jesse Linares, our team member, is going to be with us today. And he and I are just going to have, we're just going to play some riffs, if you will, or jam on some hair. And we're going to kind of relate it to um, three different topics, but we're willing to take any questions or concerns that you might have hair related. We want to really focus on giving you some ideas and ways that maybe things are changing behind the chair and at the chair. And later on, we'll talk about some um uh, education coming up this month in August. But uh, shout out to Andrew. Andrew's backstage, my man, Andrew. And Andrew will come on later and he'll chat with us later. But let's bring on Mr. Andrew. There he is. <laughs> let's bring on Jesse. Where are you at, Jesse? I just What's love up? it when he does that. <laughs> What's up, Sammy? <laughs> <laughs> good to see you, Jesse. How you doing, man? Really good. Hello from Tennessee. How are you over there? Doing really well, my friend. Hey, we were just talking earlier and we were talking a little bit about the salon and how's it going in the salon and you're back in the salon. Tell us a little bit, Jesse. How's it going, brother? Well, you know, I don't want to hold back. Um, I, I want to tell the truth and say that it's been awesome. Um, Good. First few days, you know, we got used to some new protocols, a little more sanitation, wearing the mask and all that. And maybe two weeks we had to listen to people talk about it. But then just like life, everything kind of mellowed out a little bit and people are finding their groove in there. And life at the salon feels like business as usual. Not as many people in there, but um, we're still getting a good work done and uh, doing what we were born to do is help people feel good, you know? Yeah, it's really, it's really interesting, Jesse. I remember when the no smoking law came in and when everybody had a fit in New York City, everybody just threw up their arms and life was going to end. And, you know, it, it kind of got back to normal where people understood they all had to go outside to have a cigarette. Same thing. I remember when I was, a, I think I was a teenager, seatbelts and seatbelts yeah. had to be put on. And I was remember like, that? what? You know, so I, I understand that this is a little bit more um, uh, real and dramatic. And it's, you know, it's really costing lives, if you will. But especially out in California, our love and support and thoughts and prayers go out to all of our colleagues in California for uh, some reason, things are happening in a different way in California, but know that we are there to support you and do what we can to support you. Matter of fact, at the San Via brand, we've been signing some petitions and supporting. So we're there for you guys. Know that in thoughts. Jesse, what's happening today? What are we going to be doing in this little jam we're talking about? Well, I've been looking forward to it. Just getting some riffing on with you, covering some topics that we hope can open us up into some other topics too. So um, I don't really know where you want to start, but we got five or six good ideas to riff on. Yeah. Today. You know what, where I want to start right now, Jesse, is I feel that I think things are moving into this kind of natural, organic kind of sense in terms of what we're doing. And I think some people out there in salons, some are blow drying, some are not blow drying. But I think what really is going to save people time is let's just spend some time talking about zigzag sections in terms of how that gives you a very diffused edge 
and how it can actually save you time in regards to going back and point cutting and things like that. I mean, how are you feeling about zigzag sections, Jesse? How do you use them? Well, to be truthful, I kind of learned them from watching you, Dad. But uh, we were out in the field a million years ago and um, watching you do that and just learning the why behind it. And um, so, you know, taking zigzags, like you said, to use them at certain points to section and disrupt the texture even before you begin to make the cuts. Um, for myself, I like to use them a lot when uh, using detachment or disconnection within a shape. The zigzag parting can help, you know, soften that line. And um, a long time on the road, too, I was using zigzag partings in the back of the head in order to use a, a creative disconnection or debulking that could go on at that heaviest part of the head and create some negative yes. space the top layers right. to fall into. So tons yeah. of stuff we can do. Uh, uh, yeah. You know what? First of all, let me take them through, Jesse, What I a, a way that I like to get zigzag sections. And then I want to hear your take in terms of the, the why and demonstrate some why and give us some visual results. I but I, what I want to do, guys, is I want to demonstrate, I want to show you how I go in and get these zigzag sections, Jesse. And it's really, it saves time in terms of this. But once again, like anything, Jesse, it takes practice. You right. Know, it takes practice. So let's say, for example, I wanted the line here vertically to fall in very diffuse, Jesse. So I know maybe I'm cutting vertical sections like this and I'm elevating horizontally and I'm, but in this, what I want is I want a textured edge that collapses vertically. Well, what I'm going to demonstrate, Jesse, check this out. All right. So what you want to do is if I want to take a vertical zigzag section, I visualize where I'm going to place that section and I work with the wide teeth of the comb. And that's one thing we're going to talk about today too the comb in terms of this is where all the problems and the issues come from is how we use the comb and where we use it. So what I want to do is I'm going to comb this in natural fall, Jesse, and then watch what I'm going to do. Place the comb horizontal, and then I know I want that section in this area. So I'm going to move right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Now I'm going to come through and I'm going to place my finger where I saw I wanted that line. And now when I separate that, guys, I get a zigzag line. So I get my zigzag section. So that is a great way in which to go in and be able to achieve a zigzag section. You can see the zigzag section I got. So now what it did was I didn't have to take my comb, draw one way, another way, another way, another way, another way. Nor uh, You could simply really make this simple, all right? You could take a tail comb and take the section if you wanted to, Jesse. So now the wider I move the comb, the wider the zigzags are extended. The less I move the comb, the closer they're not as wide. So watch. Let's just go little. See how I just go little? And just moving that comb back and forth. And let's go right in the middle of where I was moving. And you can see how those that zigzags a lot more finer. So you can really control what it is that you want. Now, Jesse, I'm going to show them one more. Now, watch this, guys. This is a horizontal. Let's say that I want my I, – look what I did. To get vertical – isn't it interesting? I place my comb horizontal and I zigzag horizontal, slice vertically, separate, and you have a vertical section. Now, if I comb back the hair, let's say I want a zigzag section right at that crest where we have that vertical transition take place. Let's say I want that zigzag section right there. A lot of times what helps to make it easy is draw the line in so now you know where you're going to go. But once you draw the line in, comb back. I'm going to go horizontal. I want a horizontal zigzag section, but the comb is placed vertically. And now I simply go up and down, 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 up and down. The teeth of the comb, Jesse, they never leave the head. So you'll feel the teeth on that head. Now slice where you want that line. And now you can see where I've got a zigzag section. Section, Jesse, I think, come on back, Jesse. I think this is a great way in which was can help save time in terms of getting that zigzag section. And then remember what Jesse said. When I cut this immediately, whether I choose to just point or, or notch it or whatever, I'm going to get a more of a diffused edge. So, Jesse, let's talk about the result in terms of anything else that you can add into the how. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so what basically happens when we do the zigzag parting is that we take what would be a clean line of demarcation between sections and we begin to knock it up and knock it down. Um, when you're working vertically, you're essentially taking parts of each section and lending it over to the other side. So it, that gives you that little bit of diffusion in that area. 
for a long time, I was using them too um, horizontally in the back of the head, like we talked about at the beginning. And the point was, was to take somebody that had a whole lot of hair and to find a way to get rid of some of it, you know, using uh, detachment or disconnection and do it in such a way that they might not be able to detect. So in this horizontal placement of a zigzag parting, you can see that parts of the top section are being lent to the bottom, parts of the bottom section are being lent to the top. So if I went in there and just cut this really short, there would still be long bits that live down in there with it. And just like you said, the, the longer and more skinny that those zigzags become, then the more diffusion in one area that you're getting. The more shallow that they are, the closer to a clean line. So the statement that you get to make is really determined by how narrow and close together and then also how long the zigzag is. Yeah, I think it's one thing to take the zigzag section, guys, but if there's anything Jesse and I can share with you is, okay, know the technique, okay, know what it is. It's a zigzag section. Okay, so how do I do it? Okay, know how to get it and then know when to use it. So know when to use it. So anytime you want to go in, you're working with disconnection, it's a great way to use it. I love, Jesse, using it on uh, natural movement. On yeah. hair that has natural movement, every section taking a zigzag section, you automatically get that deconstructed shape because yeah. natural curly hair, natural movement is better off if the edges are deconstructed. You get much more of a natural kind of a silhouette rather than a solid silhouette, if you will, Jesse. Absolutely. Like in shapes where you want to have texture and movement on the ends, but for some reason, perhaps due to the fabric or the condition of the hair, we're afraid to use too many texture techniques on the ends. Like you said, the zigzag partings will create that disruption already. It gives us the freedom to take that section and just cut it blunt, and then we'll still have the reflection of the zigzag in the ends. Yeah, you know what, Jesse, it reminds me, zigzags, remember guys, some of you are out there going, well, why would I want to use a zigzag? Some of you are out there going, really, zigzag sections? Remember, once again, you get a diffused soft edge. Let me give you, take you back to a class when we had last week when we had Evie Johnson on. And Evie Johnson was actually sectioning that hair with her pinky because she actually wanted a very soft uh, section to it. She didn't want a hard line to it. So it's the same concept, guys, that it applies to the fabric. What are you doing there now, Jesse? Well, I thought I would just kind of take that idea to the whole, you know, in showing how if we have a zigzag parting, which we've reflected here in this top section, I can yeah. bring it to a place and cut it clean. And I don't have to worry about creating the texture in that moment. So I know that when we talk about that, somebody out there is actually going to want to see it. So we're going to sacrifice this Lydia to the cause, my friend. I love it for the cause of education. Bring it up straight and just give me a nice clean line all the way across. Now, let me bring this up again. Now, watch the visual end result here, guys. Just stealing a piece of paper from the old printer so I can show it real good. You know, so even though we cut that straight, the zigzag parting, I don't know if you can see it, really yeah. disrupts and puts a lot of airiness and even little bits of layers already in the, the shape for us. So really a fun way to get creative. Um, use it in your color too for melding one section into another. The diffusion that you get is cool. Great, fantastic visual there, Jesse, in, in, in terms of seeing, being able to see the end result. Now think about that, guys. That visual end result that Jesse just shared with you, a lot of times you might, some of us, or at least what I used to do was I'd cut a nice silhouette, precision, I'd dry it, Jesse, and then I'd spend time slicing and dicing and point cutting and trying to get the edge that I wanted to. Once again, zigzag sections can really save you up here some time there. And then I like using it, Jesse, right along the hairline here. So, and I use it along the hairline right here because of the fact that I think a lot of times this is where we tend to overlayer the hair. Mm -hmm. So I want to leave something there. Then simply take this up, guys, come through, take this up, okay? And I'm going to work with our seven inch dry cutting shear and watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take this up, but look at this zigzag section I have here. See, if I lift this hair up and put it in with this and cut a line in here, a lot of times this gets too sparse. And that's because the hairline here is higher than it is back here. So let's come through and let's just come through and let's cut and I'll notch that. And then a lot of times after I notch, I love coming in and just softening just to reassure that I'm getting a nice soft 
line in there. And then when I release this, Jesse, you just start, you'll just start to see now I can come back in. And now I have the weight there. I can come back in and cut my angle that I want to cut into that. But the, at the same time, what I did by cutting this angle in, I've been able to maintain the weight towards that perimeter edge. Once again, just a way to go in and keep that. Yes, Andrew. Sammy, um, can you can you kind of explain how you placed that zigzag? Like how far forward, how far back? How do you yeah, adjust thank you. where you place that section? All right. How you place this section is critical. All right. You have to feel the density, feel the density in the hair. Now, if this was really fine hair, I might be way back in back through this area. Let's see where her hairline is. Look how far back I am. Okay. If the hair was a little bit thicker and I know I want a soft edge in this and I don't want to go in and I don't want to overlayer this front, which a lot of times what happens when we get these face frame layers, I might move it forward. Now let's take a look where the hairline is. See, so you have to determine how much hair do you actually want to drop out to fill in the density of where you feel it's weak. So now I'm going to go diagonal. So watch me comb the hair back diagonal. Okay. And then watch me go in with the comb slightly on a diagonal. And I'm going to place this one right here. Visualize it. Okay. Now you're going to go comb about it, about a quarter inch above that line where I visualized, quarter below. And I just continue to move. And then once again, the teeth stay right on that. This is where I want this one. And now look at where I have le least amount of hair. I put less amount down this time. So you control it, Andrew, based upon that density in terms of that, what, you're, what you want to get. I hope that answers that. That helps it out. Okay. And you can just start to see how you just get this nice natural movement out of that. And just real simple to do. Jesse. I got one more quick and dirty one for you if we got time. All right. All right, yeah, cool. let's do it. And then so I want to move into off. the – no, go ahead, Jesse, go. Go ahead, man. So I sectioned off the bridge, uh, the fringe right here from the corner of the eye vertically up. So a lot of times we'll, when we work in the field talking about classes, doing classes with people, we get a lot of questions about how to create texture in the fringe. So, you know, once again, if you'd rather avoid all of the texture techniques, then once again consider a zigzag parting. Now, in a place like this, just like what Sammy was talking about with the diagonal back section, that, you know, the area that you leave underneath is just as important as the area that you zigzag and put away. So the zigzag puts us in the area, but in a critical point, if we were working in the perimeter or in the fringe, that we might actually begin to critique that just a little bit. And just remember that anything that we send to the top will be cut separately from what lies underneath. But look at us creating this texture on the fly. Maybe if she has a left hand parting, we carry that line up just a little bit further to make sure we carry that density through. It's really a fun game to uh, apply your mind to where you put the zigs and the zags and how they interface with each other. So right here, we can go ahead and just create some texture. We can be a little arbitrary about it for demonstration, but you know that we have one thing happening and then on top we'll have something else that feeds to it. There's the first bit. And then here, we just know that as long as we can carry our perimeter to the cutting position here, we know that anything above this is free game. And so let's just cut this one straight like we did before, once again, to demonstrate the zigzag. So right above it, and a little bit straight. And even though we cut a dead line, because of the zigzag parting, you can see how it throws so much more back into what's going on there. We can fine tune that to taste. But once again, just a great way to create disruption in a place where you can have lots of fun. Thanks, Sammy. So you can see, guys, that disruption is a positive thing. You mm -hmm. know, so it's it's what's so important is that we learn those fundamentals. We learn those fundamentals. We learn the what, why, and how of what a finger angle is, finger position, side to side movement, over direction, and up and down movement elevation. But then what we do, Jesse, is we add these little details into it, like these zigzag sections, which in today's world complement our work and make it a lot easier, which sets up, which I feel is one of the key issues that happen in hairdressers. Now, once again, guys, we're talking about how can we save you time? Save yourself time, but by really being on point with intent and purpose and not going back and spending so much time corrective or detail. So, Jesse... That has a lot to do with 
where your body is or over direction. Let's right. talk about over direction, brother. Well, over direction is something that we use in haircutting all the time. Um, and, you know, as a field educator, just like you, you know, we, we get out there and we work with people about over direction and we ask them, tell us what you're doing right now. And they'll sometimes say to us, I'm just going to bring it back and do this. You know, we were, we learned these things a lot of times without really understanding the why, like you said earlier, is that it takes practice to understand the why it takes practice to go from slow to fast. And so using over direction, understanding what it is and why we use it could be really fun. Um, we wanted to talk a little bit too about a point that came up a couple months ago and we never got around to dealing with it. Someone asked us, what's the difference between condensed cutting and over direction to a stationary guide? So we'll talk about that a little bit too. What are you going to do, Sam? Okay, what I want to do is just talk about over direction in regards to using the spine as, of the comb as mm -hmm. a point to determine where you're over directing to. I think that's what I, I want to talk about, Jesse. Awesome. I'll give two shout outs out there, Jesse. Uh, let's give our big buddy from the PA area, Jason Morgan. Jason, hey, good to see you. yeah, Jason, good to see you on here, brother. And make sure you guys follow Jason Morgan. He's got through two salons, they're award-winning salons, but more importantly, the guy does some live videos and he does some beautiful work. He was a Redken educator and we love you, Jason. We also have Kia Neal. Kia artistically is on with us today. We love Kia Neal. If you're not following her, please make sure you follow her. We are learning so much by watching her and she continues and will continue to be a guest on our social platform. Jesse, take it off with what you're going to show and then I'll come back talking about the spine of the cone. All right, cool. Thanks, Sammy. Well, just talking about over direction to a stationary guide versus condensed cutting. Um, they're really similar, but there would be sometimes reasons that you would choose one over the other. So let's first about talk about what they are. And hi to Jason. I don't know if anybody knows this, but Jason Morgan, I, I actually trained under him in my early yeah. days. And, uh, turned me on to education, introduced me to Sam. Uh, the memories. I love you, buddy. All right. So what is condensed cutting? Let's talk about that first. Condensed cutting is when we're taking hair from a rather large area and then pulling it into one point to be cut all at once. You know, whereas in school or if you're a more precision based cutter, sometimes condensed cutting is really just a shortened version of cutting to a stationary guide. So as I'm taking hair that comes from the corner of the eye all the way to the right corner back, you can see that I'm moving it in a lateral way to reach some cutting position back here. You know, what that might look like from above is like this. You know, if I was bringing it to corner back to make my cut, that it would move from the front of the head and then land on top of that point. When we do condensed cutting, we're just taking all of it at once and making our cut. You know, when and why would we do this? In the salon, um, it could be because of the fabric. A lot of times if the guest has finer hair or not hair that's not as dense, we may move it into one position because we know we just get it done in one cut. When it becomes a challenge is when there is maybe a lot of hair or a, a fabric that can be a little bit challenging to us. So we begin to subdivide. And a lot of times we'll take that first guide. I'm going to lower her just a skosh. Give you just the top of the head there. there we go. Could bring this back to one place and then I make my cut. And then each section comes back successively to that same place to be cut in accordance with the same guide, which is very visible. And so each cut that we make is very crisp and very well defined. Condensed cutting, true to its nature, is gonna give you a lot of hair condensed into one spot. And because you work with a lot more hair at the same time, then it's gonna give you perhaps a little bit more of a soft edge, depending on how you remove it. And those rules are very subjective. So I don't wanna say that it has to be just so, but generally bringing all that hair back and cutting it at once will give you somewhat of a softer edge, whether it happens horizontally or if we elevate to a stationary guide as well. We could do it that way too. So just kind of getting those ideas out there about what exactly they are. I forgot who asked, but if you're watching, there you go. Thanks, bud. Looking at that now. Now, when do you like to use over direction in your cut, Sam? All right. Well, first of all, you know, over direction, you know, what is it, you guys? Let's define that. OK, here's the natural falling position of the hair. If that's the I'm going to get a little bit closer here for you. OK, this is how I like to use it, Jesse. I think one of the things I want to focus on is talking about the inconsistency, you know, of over direction yes. and how a lot of times people are my this side's longer 
than the opposite side. And why does that happen? A lot of times it's because we're overcoming and we're over directing in one position more than the other. Okay. So we have to be aware of that. So here's what I want to do first. I'm going to go to um, Jesse. Do me a favor. I'm going to grab a flip chart. I just got a little a moment here. Just take them somewhere and I'm going to grab my flip chart. Show them. Hey, we'll just keep going. What is over direction? You know, the movement that we talk about over direction, if we think about it, generally it's going to happen in a way that moves from left to right and that we're going to measure the results of that over direction by viewing our guest or mannequin from above. And that's about the only way you can really look at it. A lot of times in haircutting education, um, we can refer to extremely high elevation once it crosses a certain point as over direction as well. I've heard that out there too. So just giving us that reference where we bring everything to. And that over direction means moving the hair out of its natural fall to a different position, generally laterally or left to right. Excellent. In my case, all I was right. moving all the way back. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jesse, look what I did here. This is this will help your juniors, Jesse, because I gave this tip to one salon and they just absolutely loved it. Okay. So let's take a look, first of all, over direction. We said, let's take a look at over direction from a top view, okay? And we said that over direction, it's a great way to see it is from a top view. And I think if you understand these fundamentals, Jesse, it makes your work so much easier. Okay, that's the top view right there, all right? That's the top view, okay? So what happens is we have, that's the middle part right there, here is the ear to ear. And then on top of that, you've got a corner that comes across there. So we split that in half. And then you'll have another corner that comes the opposite way that goes this way. Is this helping you out, guys? You know, so that you understand where I'm going here. And it goes this way. <laughs> I love this, Jesse. Too many when we, when we come up with spare of the moment shit, you know. Excuse me, spare, spare of the moment stuff. All right. So you get this. So watch what I mean by this. OK, so if I understand, let's take a look at this. Is, let's just say, for example, Jesse, this is the head. OK, and you'll see where I'm going in a minute. Just divide a middle part there and go ear to ear. And that is, in most cases, how most people will work. What we've learned over the years is that there's a corner here that takes place. So if I simply take and do this and do this, you can see flat to flat, there's a corner right there. So let's just divide that in half, Jesse, for simplicity's sake. Okay, there. Okay, so now over direction. So if I take over direction is a side to side movement. It moves side to side. So if this is the hair, a piece of hair here, and I use this, and I take this whole section here, compress it, and I over direct it here, what I'm doing is I'm creating just a subtle increase in length to this position by doing that. The problem is the body as you're working around the chair. So here's what I want you to do, salon owners. You're going to invest in a dry erase marker. Jesse, this is the base of the chair. Mm. That's the base of the chair. Then what I want you to do is draw a line down the middle of the base. Here's the salon mirror. There's a salon mirror. Here's the chair. Draw a red line, a red line. Now go green or black, whatever you want to do there. So now if I'm cutting this side and I tell myself stand here, I'm cutting and I look down on top, I'll see the green line of the base chair. Then when I get over here, if I'm standing here, which happens a lot of cases, I look down at the base of the chair, I realize I'm standing here, I need to move my body here so I get the proper balance on both sides. So what I'm suggesting is these lines here at the base of your chair act as balance points where you can position your body and you know where your body is positioned around the chair. Does that make sense, guys? I, what I like about this, Sammy, too, is that Easy. part of what we teach is that your lower body is in control of the direction. Because our tendency as humans is when we pick up that section is to draw it to us. Yes. So if my body is in the right point then my direction is going to be more consistent. That's yeah. awesome. Love that. Thank you, Andrew. So now, guys, guess, look what Andrew just said. Let's take a look at this. Now you got me rolling, Jesse. You got me rolling, brother. 
Okay, so here we go. Watch. See, my what I do, guys, I'm right-handed. So when I'm cutting, bring the mannequin in. Jason Morgan, are you loving this, buddy? You know this, okay? But so if I'm cutting on this side and I'm moving, whether I cut over my hand or whether I cut palm to palm, nothing's in front of me. This is her face, by the way. So nothing is in front of me. So what happens is my body moves easy this way. Whereas when I'm over here, whether I choose to cut in, in like this palm to palm or over my hand, what's in front of me now is my elbow. So my body doesn't want to move. So therefore, I'm combing and combing. Now I'm over directing this side here more. So I'm over here. I'm over directing. I'm supposed to be directing it over the ear. And now I'm over directing this one here. Okay, so now when this, I over direct it to this position, when it releases, it falls longer. We get over here, I go over the ear, Sam, over the ear, that's where I'm at. Now this side, hold your head up straight, yo. Now this side is shorter. And that's because I over directed this side where I wanted to. This side, I over directed a little bit more than where I wanted to. Now let's talk about how we can counter that, all right? Let me give an example, and I'm going to give it to you to the best way I can here. And I'm going to dampen this hair, Jesse, so they can see it. All right, if you're learning something here today and you're doing great, just say great. Just give us a great. Okay? If you're learning something, just say great. Just give me a thumbs up, whatever it happens to be. All right, so let's just comb. All right, watch. Let's go with the middle part. Okay? Now, this is where I'm going to cut that guide, right there in the middle. Now, I want you to look at this is the spine of the comb. Look where the spine of my comb is, right on that line. See that spine? Right on that line. That's when I comb straight up and I cut. Okay, now let's over direct this section to that. So I take my next section. Now, watch the spine of the comb. The spine of the comb is in the middle of her nose. That's where I cut that section. So now I'm going to pick this section up that needs to be cut to my guide. When the spine of the comb gets to the center of her nose, I'm there. Comb up. See, if I'm not aware of that, I comb, comb, comb. My comb floats away. My hand floats away. Now look at where I'm at. I'm way past the center of her nose. So what I do is use the spine of the comb to dictate where you comb and release to the cutting line from. Let's go again. There's my section. I'm going cutting at a stationary guide at the center of the nose. Now I take the comb and I comb, spine of the comb gets aligned with the center of the nose. When it's there, I comb up and I cut. Now that's a great tip to create consistency <coughs> from one side to the other, Jesse. Well, I love the tips that you gave about putting those marks on the chair too. A lot of times when using over direction, like you kind of pointed out that when we're just combing and continually pulling to ourselves, if we're not in exactly the right position, that's when we sometimes tend to vilify using over direction in our cutting or talking bad about condensed cutting because we're like, oh man, that didn't work. I still had to go back and detail so much of it. And a lot of times when we have those little accidents, uh, we talk about the technique as if it wasn't that good, but truly all along, it was just us not having it totally dialed in and not being the same on both sides of the head for sure. Right. Yep. Any other little helpful tips, Jesse, that you teach your juniors in regards to over, over direction or in regards to body position? Because Absolutely. what's that analogy of, you know, you comb and you always comb to the center of your body? Yeah. What's that about? I mean, definitely um, when we're working with junior hairdressers, we're dealing with stuff that's very um, principle based, you know, the term that we love to use all the time. And that we all know that style or flavor is something that we stick on top of that. So, yeah, the, the fundamentals of keeping your body in the right position uh, and then taking a what's the word I'm looking for, an analytical approach to the work that we're doing. So um, we have an accident. We make a mistake. You know, and then if we allow that to be labeled as a bad thing in our minds, then we're never going to go back and try that thing again. So I would encourage them and anyone who's watching that has a learner spirit that, you know, we do something and we measure the results. And then if the results weren't exactly what we wanted, then we look to refine what exactly went wrong. And that's the beautiful thing about principles and the points of reference that Sammy was talking about is that we can always go back and retrace our steps to find out where did it go off? And then what would we need to do to correct that again, for sure? 
keeping that spine of the comb. Um, when working with over direction, let me turn her just a little bit so we can all see. Is that the tips that Sammy gave me a lot of years ago were, you know, make your combings from both sides using the fine teeth to work out tension. But whatever your final combing is, is that you bring that from the outside towards your point of over direction and actually using that spine of the comb to orient yourself as to where exactly you should be. Just like Sammy said, you see that spine, there's the line. What did you say, man? <laughs> so put that spine like right on top of where you want that to be. And it just brings everything right to you so neatly. Sammy busts on me because I like to comb a lot, but just make sure the final combing brings you towards your point of over direction and use the spine to plant yourself right where that should be, which would be right on top of that corner. Yes, exactly. You see, guys, now what we're talking about is we're talking about one of the movements. We're talking about over direction. And then you have elevation up and down and finger angle in and out. Now, that's another story another day. But there's something that also works with over direction, and it's this tool. We've already talked about this tool and how this tool can create issues. It can create problems, Jesse. This is where the mistakes come from. It's not yeah. how you have your hand or whatever. It's this. This is what creates the mistakes. Sam, what are, you, what are you talking about? I'm talking about how you comb the hair and where you comb it to. And the consistency. Yeah, and what, yeah, thank you, Jesse. And where your position in regards to one side to the other. That's where you're going to comb to. So now let's just talk about the, the thing about the comb. Okay. Now, if you take a look at the comb, you have the wide teeth, a sectioning tooth, and the fine teeth. Jesse. When I work with one length hair, my bobs, I want them one length. I work less tension. I'm constantly working with the wide teeth. I will clean the section with my fine teeth. But my last combing angle, my last combing angle through that section before I cut is wide teeth. So I get consistency of tension. Critical. Don't be one of these little guys that keeps doing this. And then you just, you know, you just cut it whichever one you're on. <laughs> you have to understand which way and where you want it and then throw them around, right? Voila, magic. So now, so we've talked about wide, wide teeth, fine teeth. Jesse, when I want more tension and I'm actually graduating the hair, layering the hair, I'm going to work with the fine teeth of the comb. What are your little takes, Jesse, on let's talk about the teeth, fine versus wide, wide versus fine. I mean, once again, it's just like choosing a brush or uh, choosing a shear. You know, you're going to choose that weapon based on what you're going up against. So if I have hair that is extremely coarse, dense, thick, you know, all of those things that we talk about, um, then I might need something with wider teeth to give me that no tension idea that you were talking about. You know, so like working with my bob, if I wanted a, a less tension idea, sometimes my long cutting comb, just because the wider teeth of that tend to be really more of a medium. You know, so this is generally what I consider our bigger tension comb. And then this is the one that yes. just lets it all out. So personally, um, I use them all, but I find myself with the shorty in my hand more and more. And that was a recent evolution for me. I just kind of love the, the thick and the thin of it is that I can get in there with something that fits in my little hand and I've got both stories ready to happen. Yeah. You know what, Jesse? I, I mean, I have to say that I was always, you know, I didn't really understand the, the, the wide and the fine, you know, I just thought the wide was for me to detangle and the white, the fine was for me to cut. That's how I, I took it. But also the idea of the contrast of the comb, you know, mm -hmm. that's one thing that this brand is about. It's about the contrast of the comb. Look, as I place it over the hair, if I'm wor working with a dark level comb in color, this one black, you can see how it's getting lost in that hair. But if I work with a white, if I work with white, you can see, I can see, look at the spine, how that spine just pops yeah. out and I can see the line. That's why you see us making black and white combs. But I love this comb. This was a comb developed by our education director, and Andrew Carruthers. This is the barber of the artist series barber comb. So Jesse, tell me a little bit about, you know, why do, why do I want to switch to a comb that is so fine that doesn't have the width of my cutting comb? I really do love that comb. I'm really feeling stupid right now that I don't have one to pull out and show to you. But <laughs> so that comb is awesome. I use that comb, believe it or not, more than anything on cutting big perimeters. Um, if I'm dry cutting and I want a comb that's going to allow me to penetrate 
you know, all the way through somebody's hair and touch the skin without condensing the hair against the head. That is one of my favorite combs for busting a big, nasty perimeter all at once. Because even this comb, as you can see, the width of it is maybe like an inch. So you really only have that much space to put hair in before it starts to push it up against the head. So I love that Artist Series handle comb for uh, doing clipper work as well. But I told Andrew a long time ago, man, I don't know if you knew it when you made this thing, but it is awesome for perimeters. Right. Yep. All right, guys. So remember, we've talked about combing, and one of the things is the, the uh, sectioning tooth. And Andrew does this great YouTube video that we have in our series on sectioning. Mm -hmm. So make sure you go to the YouTube channel and watch it. I mean, Andrew just does it. Uh, Jesse, can you demonstrate something there that Andrew teaches, which I think is awesome? Yes. Yeah, I really like finger. seeing his way. Um, oh, is, is he coming on? Oh, I thought I heard his voice. Okay. Andrew was like, I'm here. I'll do it myself. <laughs> I was always taught, or I don't know where I came up with the idea. My habit was to use the fine teeth of the comb always. And I, I always thought this was something that was just goofy or that you used to pull a bobby pin out of somebody's hair with. And I didn't really understand the point until I saw Andrew. And he will take his finger and just put it right behind that tooth yes. right there, you know, to mm -hmm. where you're right on that thing. And he speaks a lot about connection. So, you know, placing one digit or one finger where I'm going to stop the section and then putting this finger, pressing the tooth in front of it to connect the two and then just draw them together. And it does pretty easily make a nice clean line for you. Yes. Andrew's so yes. smart. Yeah, it really is. It's so, so such simple things in section going from one point to another. But I love that little index finger on there in terms of being able to control it. All right. So now this is for the students. And maybe you have exercises that you're doing with your juniors, uh, Jesse. But when I remember when I went to beauty school and then when I got to my first salon, my boss at the first salon said, your comb travels wherever you go. <laughs> so if I walked in the salon, he said, I want it in your hand. When I was at home, he said, you're sitting on sofa, you're watching TV, it's in your hand. I go, why? The comb is part of your hand from this point forward, Sam. You have to understand it needs to become become part of your hand. So he gave me exercises to do. He said, you need to know when to go to your Y, when to go to your fine. So you, I need you to just keep doing this all day long. You just do this all day long, walking around the salon. I'd be doing it, walking around. And not only that, but it really created dexterity in my fingers, in my hands. Then he made me, he made me switch it to left-handed and I had to do it left-handed also. I said, why left-handed? Because he goes, you never know when you're going to need that. But it's just the idea of just doing that. Yeah, it's awkward, but I mean, it's awkward. the idea of doing that, right? So just things that you need to know about the combs. It's the same thing. Once you've done that, Jesse, then combine the two together. Now just use the comb with the shear and get the comb moving with just the shear. So you know where you're going to go with that. If you've got been able to learn something today, isn't it, uh, I mean, interesting how we barely, I think we cut three sections. Right. I see, I see there's a lot of learning going on here based upon the comments in terms of what you're, what you guys are coming. I want to give a shout out to my good man, Billy Santos, Billy Bob. I am praying for your brother. Uh, I know that you're suffering. Your salon is suffering in California. I want you to hang in there. You know, just do it, Billy. Just do it. Just don't quit. Just do it. It's in those three words. Look for it. Just do it. So now the idea, guys, once again, once you're here, you got this, it just makes your work a lot easier. Remember, our goal in giving you the simplicity of these things is making you understand that simplicity is today's brilliance. Because simplicity, simple things will save you a lot of time. Jesse, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to tack on a little bit to what you had talked about a bit ago. It was just about becoming very familiar with your tools. And sometimes in today's culture, we tend to treat equipment as something that's a little bit disposable. But one thing I, I love about our equipment is that it, it sticks around for a while. You know, it's not just going to like, you know, go uh, heels up on you and die. So I would encourage everybody to really develop a bond with the equipment that you use. You know, Sammy, I bet when you took that comb home every day, it became something that was dear to you. It wasn't just something that you would pitch out the window and go get another one. So, you know, like find that passion for the craft itself. You know, we hear those terms a lot and I feel like a way that, you know, that we can behind the chair is to really fall in love with the tools that we have and the, the secrets that they give us as we continue to practice and train on the things that we do.
Yes, it's so, so important, guys, that you do that. And there's some exercises that I do every morning for my hands. They're real simple. There's another video out on YouTube that's for them. But it's all about your hands, guys, which is why we created these ergonomic tools is so that we want you to have longevity in your career. We want you to have a long time career in regards to what's happening. And the youth out there are the, are the butterflies of the future. They're the rainbows of the future. So it's so important that we really train them. We teach them some good fundamental skills, some good principles, some good things that they continue to use throughout their career. I think too many times they look for the gimmicks or looking for the tricks. Mm -hmm. You know, first they have to understand before you can do any trick, you have to have some good fundamentals and your hands have to be in shape. That's so, so important. I mean, once you have those fundamentals, I mean, you're the decider of tricks. You know, you can come up with your own tricks after that. And you'll soon discover that when you ground yourself in the principles and the fundamentals that there are no tricks. You know, they're all yes. just extensions of the core. That's right. All right, brother. Well, listen, it's been great having you on, Jesse. I want to thank you so on. much, buddy. Uh, you know, we love you. We really appreciate just what you bring to the table in terms of, you know, I'm so glad that you understand you you don't try to be somebody else because you know everybody else is taken. So you might as well just be you just might as well just be you. That's and, that's nice we, <laughs> and that's what we love. We love the fact that you are you. And that said, guys, it's it's so important that you're out there and that you continue to be you. Jesse, any closing remarks before you leave? No, thank everyone that came to join us today. Um, just please always um, ask the question back to yourself. You know, all the questions that you bring to class and ask, get a mannequin, get your shears and ask the question and go to work for yourself. That's the secret. We can tell you all day long, but the discovery is ultimately up to each of us as an individual. Well said, brother. Don't leave yet. Bring Andrew. There he is. Andrew, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> What's up, brother? Hi. Hey, um, yeah, Jesse, this was awesome. I think, you know, consistently throughout every uh, segment that you do, the thing that people just say over and over again is just how um, how much they enjoy um, the way that you um, the way that you describe things. So I appreciate yeah. that too. I'm a really slow learner, so it takes me a long time to get something, but when I do, I've got it. <laughs> so I love to share it. <laughs> Thank you guys for That's listening. That's what we love about you, brother. That's what we love about you. Andrew, uh, today we had Spain on. We had Ecuador on. We had Pakistan on. Uh, who else? There was some, some South, oh, South Africa. Africa. South Africa was on. Mexico. So Mexico was on. Mexico. Mexico. So we really want to thank you guys for your time. Andrew, Jesse, don't go anywhere. Andrew, what do we got coming up? So Wednesday, we have Allison and Shannon King joining me for Wellness Wednesday, which I'm super stoked on. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm excited about tomorrow because I'm going to do some Q-tip quick tips. That's right. <laughs> some quick tips for you behind the chair at the salon there. So, And what else, Andrew? Um, next week, we have, uh, of course, Manic and Monday with you, Sam, once again. But on Tuesday, for Transformation Tuesday, we have Cindy Duplantis from Canada joining us, which is really exciting. Yeah. And then, that's, uh, that, that's actually August the, what is that, the 11th, right? No, August the, yeah. What am I looking at? August 10? Uh, let's see. No, August 11. August 11. Yes, August 11th. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't have my calendar in front of me. <laughs> August 11th. And then we got, uh, after that, it's uh, you on uh, Transformation well, Tuesday. Yep. The the following week, yes. It'll be in that, me. That's August, that August 18th, Andrew. Mm -hmm. And then after that, guess who we have as a special guest the 25th of August? I think his name is... George? Yeah, I think his last name is Joa. Joa. That's right. <laughs> We've got Canada Month happening in August. And I don't know about you, but I love those Canadians. I mean, those yeah. people are so, yeah. so talented. Cindy Duplantis is going to be doing some upstyles on the 11th. And then George will be do cutting some hair on the 25th. Uh, this uh, tomorrow, as I said, on uh, Transformation Tuesdays, I want to focus on giving you some ideas and things that help you save time behind the chair, uh, at the chair in the salon. Cool? All right. All right, but well, Andrew, let's say goodbye to Jesse. Bye, Jesse.
Bye, guys. Bye, Jesse. <laughs> hey, we love you, Jesse. Love you, guys. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you so much for running behind the scenes. I want to thank everybody so much for their time. But most important, I just want to add a couple of things. I think that uh, this is such a great opportunity to learn right now. Uh, I don't know about you, Andrew, but a lot's been going on in terms of being able to learn what's happening out there, uh, taking the time and the opportunity to learn things that you can do differently behind the chair. I think that now uh, we can all see that the, the hair, being a hairdresser is changing in regards to how we work. And I want everybody to just really just embrace that change and think about, about where you're at in terms of that and where you're at in terms of being able to embrace this. Uh, there are so many things going on in our lives, whether it be personal or whether it be professional. One of the things that I just want to say to everybody is when you have an opportunity and if you are open, I know that you, there's a lot of compassion, a lot of gratitude out there right now. But be, have, show some gratitude for that salon owner. Really reach out to that salon owner. And when you open, put your hand on that salon door to go inside there to work, whatever's going on in your world, leave it outside the door. And stay focused with intent and purpose on that particular person that's in your chair. One of the great things that I've been hearing is people are loving going back to work. And one of the reasons being is because it's much slower pace. And I can focus with intent and purpose on that particular person. I can focus with intent and purpose in what it is that I'm doing. And I think in today's world, that's so important, guys, is that you're going to understand that every person that walks in that that salon is looking for an experience. They're looking to be embraced. And what is so important to understand, I believe personally that I want to share with you, that as a hairdresser, it's so important that you move yourself towards a teacher and understand that the time has come now to really teach behind the chair, teach at the chair, teach, 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 add value. Value is just simply knowledge. Price is what they pay. Value is what they get. So ask yourself, what value are you adding behind the chair? These little tips that we gave you today probably maybe awoken you and said, oh, my gosh, I've forgotten about these things. Well, guess what? You now have the time to be consistent at the chair with these things and think about that. I know those clients have so much. Remember, they have fear. They have anxiety when they come in. And, you know, I was asked recently, do you feel we're essential? Well, let me ask, say this, define essential. First of all, I thank all of those people out there that are, that are out there that are essential in the, in the hospitals and everybody. Yet I want you to understand that as a hairdresser, we have the power to affect someone's life. Someone can walk into a salon and not have the best thing going on in their life. But I guarantee you, when they leave the salon, their attitude, their mindset, the way they feel, the way they look at themselves is totally, totally different. So, yes, we are essential to a human being. We are essential to a human's mind. And I'm saying this because I continue to pray for California. It's so important. And that we overprotect and not overact. Do the things that they are asking us to do is so important. I wanted to go there, guys, because I have so many, so many, so many dear friends in California that are suffering right now. And I just wanted to share my thoughts and uh, I hope that everybody out there supports California. And not only that, but understand the hairdressing industry will survive. We're going through a transition. Disruption, it's not a disruption. It's just simply an interruption. Thanks so much for watching today. I look forward to tomorrow. Join me tomorrow for Transformation Tuesday, and I'll give you some more tips. Thanks so much. God bless. Be self.